another historic moment. This is perhaps outside, but perhaps within your uh, space of frameworks that you think about that just happened, uh, I guess, a couple of weeks ago is, um, I don't know if you're paying attention at all, is the the GameStop and yeah. Wall, <laughs> Wall Street bets. Uh, fun. <laughs> so th it's really fascinating. There's kind of a theme to this conversation we're having today because it's like neural networks. The, 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 it's cool how there's a large number of people in a distributed way, almost having a kind of fun. We're able to take on the powerful elites, uh, elite hedge funds, centralized powers, and overpower them. Uh, do you have well, thoughts I on mean, this whole saga? I don't know enough about finance, but it was right. like the Elon, you know, Robin Hood guy when they talked. Yeah, yeah, what'd you think about that? Well, the Robin Hood guy didn't know how the finance system worked. That was clear, right? He was treating like the, the people who settled the transactions as a black box. Mm -hmm. And suddenly somebody called him up and said, hey, black box calling you. Your transaction volume means you need to put out $3 billion right, right now. And he's like, I don't have $3 billion. Like, I don't even make any money on these trades. Why do I owe $3 billion while well, you're sponsoring the trade? So, yeah. so there was a set of abstractions that, you know, I don't think either, like, like now he understands it. Like this happens in chip design. Like mm -hmm. you buy wafers from TSMC or Samsung or Intel and, you know, they say it works like this and you do your design based on that. And then chip comes back and doesn't work. And then suddenly you start having to open the black boxes. Mm -hmm. Like the transistors really work like they said, you know, what's the real issue? So, so the, there's a whole set of things that created this opportunity and somebody mm -hmm. spotted it. Now, people spot these kinds of opportunities all the time. So there's been flash crashes. There's been, you know, there's always short squeezes are fairly regular. Every mm -hmm. CEO I know hates the shorts mm -hmm. because they're, they're manipulating, they're trying yep. to manipulate their stock in a way that they make money and, you know, deprive value from both this, you know, the company and the investors. So the fact that, you know, some of these stocks were so short, it's hilarious that, yeah. the, that this hasn't happened before. I don't know why. And I don't actually know why some serious hedge funds didn't do it to other hedge funds. And some of the hedge funds actually made a lot of money on this. Yes. So my, my guess is we know 5% of what really happened and that a lot of the players don't know what happened. And well, the people who probably made the most money aren't the people that they're talking about. Yeah. That's... Do you think there was something? Uh, I mean, this is the this is the cool kind of uh, Elon. Uh, you're the same kind of conversationalist, which is like first principles questions of like, what the hell happened? Uh, just very basic questions of like, was there something shady going on? Yeah. Uh, what you know, who are the parties involved? It's the basic questions that everybody wants to know about. Yeah, so like we're in a very comp hyper competitive world, right? But transactions like buying and selling stock is a trust event. Mm -hmm. You know, I trust the company represented themselves properly. You know, I bought the stock because I think it's going to go up. I trust that the regulations are solid. Now, inside of that, there's all kinds of places where, you, you know, humans over trust. And, you know, this, this exposed, let's say, some weak points in the system. I don't know if it's going to get corrected. I don't know if the... I don't know if we have close to the real story. You yeah, know, my my suspicion is we don't. Yeah, and listen to that guy. He was like a little wide eyed about, it. and then he did this, and then they did that, and I was like, hey, I think you should know more about that your business than that. But again, there's many businesses when like this layer is really stable, you stop paying attention to it. Mm -hmm. You pay attention to the stuff that's bugging you or new. Mm -hmm. right? You don't pay attention to the stuff that just seems to work all the time. You just you know, the sky's blue every day, California. And every once in a while, you know, it rains. And everybody's like, what do we do? Somebody go bring in the lawn furniture. You know, like, it's getting wet. We don't know yeah. why it's getting wet. Yeah, it doesn't I was blue for work. like 100 days, and now it's, you know. So, <laughs> But the, part of the problem here with Vlad, this, the CEO of Robinhood, is, is the scaling is that, we, that we've been talking about is there's a lot of yeah. unexpected things that happen with the scaling. And you have to be... I think the scaling forces you to then return to the fundamentals. Uh, well, it's, it's interesting because when you buy and sell stocks, the scaling is, you know, the stocks don't only move in a certain range. And if you buy a stock, you can only lose that amount of money. On the short short market, you can lose a lot more than you can benefit. 
Yeah. Like it has a it has a weird cost you know cost function or whatever the right word for that is. Mm -hmm. So he was trading in a market where he wasn't actually capitalized for the downside if it got outside a certain range. Now, whether something nefarious has happened, I have no idea. But at some point, the 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 financial risk to both him and his customers was way outside of his financial capacity, and his understanding how the system worked was clearly weak. Or, or he didn't represent himself. I, you know, I don't know the person. And well, there's when a, I listened to him, like, yeah, it could have been the surprise question was like, and then these guys called, and you know, it, it sounded like he was treating stuff as a black box. Maybe he shouldn't have, but maybe he has a whole pile of experts somewhere else, and it was going on. I don't, I don't know. Yep. Yeah. I mean, this is uh, this is one of the qualities of a, a good leader is under fire, you have to perform, and that means to think clearly and to speak clearly. And he dropped the ball on those things because, and understand yeah. the problem quickly. Learn and understand the problem at like at the like basic level. Like what the hell happened? And my guess is, you know, at some level it was amateurs trading against you know experts slash insiders slash people with yeah. you know special information. Outsiders versus insiders. Yeah, and the insiders, you know, my guess is the next time this happens, we'll make money on it. The insiders always win. <laughs> well, well, they have more tools and more incentive. I mean, this always happens. Like the outsiders are doing this for fun. The insiders are doing this twenty four seven. But there's it's numbers in the outsiders. This is the interesting thing. Well, is there's, there there's numbers on the insiders too. Like, like different kind of numbers. Different yeah. kind of numbers. But this could be a new era because I don't know. At least I didn't expect that uh, a bunch of redditors could. You know, there's uh, you know millions of people it was a can get surprise together. attack. The next one won't be a surprise. But don't you think the 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 crowd, the people, are planning the next attack? We'll see. But it has to be a surprise. Can't be the same game. And so the insider, it's like yeah. it could be. There's a very large number of games to play, and they can be agile about it. I don't, I don't know. I'm not an expert. Right, that's a good question. How yeah. the space of games? How how restricted yeah. is it? <laughs> yeah, and the system is so complicated; it could be relatively unrestricted. And also, like you know, during the last couple of financial crashes, you know, what set it off was you know sets of derivative events where, you know, the, you know Nassim Talib's, you know, thing is they're 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 trying to lower volatility in the short run by creating tail events. And the systems always evolve towards that, and then they always crash. And like, like an S curve is the, you know, start low, ramp, plateau, crash. It's a hundred percent effective <laughs> in the long run. 